Hi there. I'm John Lebensold for Killer PHP. And today what I'm going to be doing is building on the last video where we've essentially built out the beginnings of an HTML5 template. And we've essentially got this left hand area. We've done a pull quote over here. We've um, got sort of a two column layout over here. We've added a footer. You'll notice there's some gradients. There's absolutely zero images in this design, uh, which is pretty cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to work on getting the sidebar in place and uh, maybe do some more polishing and then also look at uh, a couple of tags that we've introduced in HTML5 or that have been introduced in HTML5, uh, most specifically the time tag. So let's get to it. Um, right now, this is what our page looks like. It's pretty small. It's less than 100 lines. Uh, we've got basically an We've got two article sections. I'm just going to collapse them here. And they are currently sitting inside of a section inside of another section. Um, so with HTML5, you want to use as much as possible the semantic markup that's made available for you. So in this case, I'm trying to limit, instead of turning section into another div, I want to limit the amount of use of extraneous tags. But because in this design I've got to have something that wraps our design, I have to have some kind of section. I suppose I could also use div as well. I mean, div is, is just as much a generic term as section. So this is the kind of decision that you, of course, could be making as a designer when you're building your HTML5 site. Uh, so now what I want to do is I want to build out the right-hand navigation. Now, in my aside tag, I'm going to create an unordered list with essentially a series of boxes. So I'm going to have a list item, and inside that list item, I want to have a, I guess in this case, I'm going to use div just to shake things up a bit. And if type, this will be a summary. And I'm going to make an, an, this an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is when you're on an elevator, if you wanted to convey your idea in the time it takes to go from one floor to another, that would be an elevator pitch. And then just a paragraph here. Now, I am going to grab some lorem ipsum text for my elevator pitch. maybe a little more than that. Doesn't really matter what the text is for our example. That looks pretty good. And let's see what it looks like so far. So we've got this elevator pitch. Doesn't look particularly interesting right now. And it's inside of this box, this gray box. Now, I also want to have a navigation here. And this is where we're going to start looking at some advanced CSS selectors. Because I'm going to use, because this is going to be navigation, even though let's say this is sub-navigation, I'm still going to use the nav tag. Because after all, it is, it is navigation, right? So I'm going to create this section, and it'll be sub-navigation. And it'll be let's say um, let's say category let's say food this is going to be just a regular blog so uh, personal politics entertainment and I don't know, let's say games. So this is the sub navigation of this particular home page. Now, if you look at this, all of a sudden my sub navigation is looking very strange. It seems to have adopted some of the navigational traits or some of the design traits of my top navigation, but obviously I want this to be designed differently in this context. Now, before you decide that you want to change the markup, simply because you've already styled something else, this is where CSS overrides really come in handy and where they can help you build something that 
you know, over here it looks pretty semantically nice, it looks semantically correct. There's no reason why we should have to change our markup in order for it to look the way that we want it to look. So in my style.css file here, I'm going to just use a little comment here and say, this is the sidebar. And we're going to have a side nav. And then a side nav is going to look a little different. So a side nav, first of all, we need to get rid of that background. So it's going to have a background of none. There we go. Border, none. OK. Alrighty, we're better off. Now I also want to fix up the layout of these boxes. So just in general, I've got an unordered list in my aside nav, or in my aside section, and it's going to have a margin left of, I don't know, let's say 10 pixels. So already there's a bit of space, that's better. And there's a list item. For each list item, I'm going to have maybe no top margin, but I want a left and right margin of 5 pixels. Make sure there's no padding. Maybe we'll add a position relative because we are, we're dealing with some floating issues here. So there's some floating, so do that. Also, we want to make sure that the list style for the unordered list is none. This will get rid of those little bullets. That's a little better already. We, I don't think we need a background here. All right. And we're going to have to make sure that these list items have a fixed width of something. So in order to make that happen, I can say width auto. Nope, that's not going to work. Well, it's going to work for this guy, but it's not going to work for our navigation because our navigation has to be overridden. So the nav is going to be a little trickier, but let's get this working first. So I'm going to add in my aside unordered list, I want to add some more uh, design choices here. I'm going to add a border, first of all, one pixels, one pixel, let's make it a, like a like a gray. So now we've got this gray border. And you'll notice that we've got a sub nav and now these guys have a border as well. I'm going to show you how you can take care of that in just a second. We'll add a border radius. Whoops, Mo's border radius of let's say 12 pixels. Now we're getting a rounded border. These guys look kind of cool, but they're not fitting the bill. And I also want to set a background of white. 